Come on, this is uh, cage bending. And see our guy who's normally back here, Josh, he must be running parts up to the front, but I'll show you. These are my babies. I bought these last year. This is a, we do a lot of uh, both prototyping work and some production work on these machines. This is a 1973 Bridgeport mill that uh, we bought and have been refurbishing. So. But my real baby, and this is actually in production. So every titanium cage starts with like a 25, 26 inch piece of three, two and a half titanium. For the laser welding, the ends have to be perfectly flat and clean. And so every single tube is hand lathed on this lathe um, into, to control the length, but also the flatness. So after all the bending in the tube, we've only got a 0.15 millimeter tolerance in that face. So here in running cage bending, uh, really welding operations for us, Josh Lewis. And this guy, we have been together now, what, over 15 years. So Josh joined me at Zip probably like 04, 05. I don't know if we even remember. But, but uh, you guys may know him. Josh did pretty much every job that existed at Zip at some point or another, <laughs> and then became the guy that made all the disc wheels. So every Pro Tour race, every hour record, every time you saw a disc wheel, each one of those is what, five or six hours of hand labor, right? I mean, they're yeah. really complex. How many discs? Seven. Seven, yeah. How many yeah. do you think you've made in the years? <laughs> uh, let's see. Probably 3,000, I would say, give or take. Yeah. It's un and then we unbelievable. Did one for Tony Kanan. Yeah. Did the, uh, the carbon clincher, or the, the Super 9 carbon clincher. Yeah, all of it. So we've been together forever, and uh, he is the single most detail oriented, consistent person I've ever met. <laughs> so wherever I go, he goes. <laughs> so, because we need somebody who he's, I mean, truly like one of the only people I've ever worked with who I can say, like, I need you to do this hand process over and over again in exactly the same way. Yeah. And it happens. And then we can use that to drive forward uh, with data or questions. So this is the process that we've developed here and take it away. Can I, right. You can talk us through what you're... So uh, we're starting with a, a rod that we've already laid on both sides. Uh, we kind of have a, a little device here to give us roughly where we know we're, where we want to start. There. This guy goes here. Yeah. yeah, so one of the the challenges with something, I mean, even as simple seeming as the bottle cage, is you're starting out as a 25 inch, give or take, uh, tube, and you've got to do what, nine bends mm -hmm. in three axes, right? And, and, <laughs> um, and all the way down through the process. So all of these steps later, our total tolerance stack up is 0.15 millimeters at the faces. So, you know, there are quite literally um, probably 10,000 ways to do it wrong. <laughs> and there's really one way to do it right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the other thing is, is if they're not in tolerance, we found that we'll get defects with the bin. And as long as we can change the, the settings on these fixtures, they'll work fine, but there's no sense in wasting a good titanium rod. When, like, like you said, those, the spec's so small that anything out of this, it just compounds as you keep going, and it just, it's not gonna work right. So one of the challenges with bending anything, but titanium in particular, is that it's really speed sensitive. And so he's got to, he's got to count timing uh, of each of these bends. And really, they really need to be bent at the, kind of the same speed, the yeah, same velocity. Four to five seconds. beauties of uh, 
of the modern technology, right? With 3D printing, we're able to 3D print all of our fixtures and gauges uh, for these processes. And so it gives the engineers a ton of flexibility um, and really the ability to on the fly make check fixtures and gauge tooling uh, for the factory floor typically within a day. You know, if Josh needs a tool or something to be modified, uh, we can typically have that done for him in usually a day. And the in-process quality control, what he's doing is really important too to just make sure that not, not only is everything straight and aligned, but you know, if, you're, if you're repeating a process consistently and getting different results, that could point to a material problem uh, or, or some other problem in the process. And so you know, we find it really important to gauge these at every step of the way. And then because the tolerance is so tight at the end and there's no fill, every part gets checked here and then fitted with custom fit to this last die to control the 180. And this is the hardest bend in the whole process. And sadly it's last, so it's where it's easiest to, to lose, the, lose the tube. can see the they close up as we open and close we can't even see daylight through it so we call that a good one we rack it ready for butt welding so he's bringing them in yeah here let's, let's pull it out he's bringing them in like this and you can see the precision needed for the gap there. That's our 0.15 face to face. When we laser weld, there is no filler rod, right? And so we are stirring together the uh, material that's already there with the laser. And so when you, there's one that's complete. It's really hard to get a photo of, but let's watch him actually do one. You get a better picture. So. We'll, we'll be watching it here on the machine. He's getting it set up. So you, you have to fill the cage form. We fill this guy with argon gas, and then we put him in a fixture, and we'll now put him in, and there's a, the tube, the silver tube you see coming down is a laminar flow of argon gas that's flowing over the tube. And then the little screen that he's working to here, that is a 50 times magnification of what the laser sees. So the camera on top is actually looking through a two-way mirror down the beam of the laser. The argon gas is flowing down, so he's driving with these crosshairs. And then when he hits go, it's going to kick on a program to actually weld the tube together. So here we go. So now each pulse, as you see it, it's a four millisecond pulse every 250 milliseconds. And so in that four milliseconds, the titanium goes almost to the temperature of the surface of the sun, becomes a liquid, almost the viscosity of water, and it flows together like a wave on the ocean. It's, you're stirring together the, uh, the titanium on either side. And what we're doing here is a two-pass weld, right? So we think about, you know, we talked to a Moots or a Firefly, Ericsson, one of the top titanium frame builders, they'll tell you about two pass welding, that you do a deep root pass to get the penetration, the full depth penetration between the material, and then a cover pass to kind of clean and smooth. And we're actually able to do that here with the laser because it's um, fully computerized. The first pass happens at one power and depth, and then the second pass actually kind of widens the beam and softens that to kind of stir together and give you this beautiful finish. The other advantage of these, you can see this thing's come right out. I can touch it. 
um, with my bare hands, there's almost no heat in the part. Uh, and it's one of the powers of laser welding that there's so little heat put in and it's put in so specifically that there's no heat affected zone uh, really to speak of. It's probably somewhere on the order of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters and it's very shallow. Um, so you can get a, it's really about the most perfectly perfect weld you can imagine um, every single time in this process. And so all of that is being done. This is a 0.3 millimeter wall thickness tied tubing. So I mean, that's about four sheets of copy paper, uh, if you think about it. So about four sheets of paper thick. Um, and we're welding it to 99% depth, uh, really plus or minus like one or 2% accuracy. So I mean, incredible precision uh, in that process. So set this here, take you around the other side. So this is a laser tiger shark. Does, this is called the butt welding process. So our first shark, Tiger Shark does this process, and then we have Great White Shark does this uh, process. And can I, are you, are you about to shoot? Yeah. Okay, ah, here, we'll, we'll be good. Okay, so here's another, this is a 50 times magnification of the plate. So what you're seeing here, this is the edge of the plate, and this is the edge of the tube. And so you think the tube goes is about this wide that's a six millimeter 6.35 millimeter diameter tube and that is a one millimeter thick plate so that's how he gives you an idea of the level of magnification that we're shooting at here so here i will block this one is much brighter and so he doesn't have glasses on but i'll i'll stand in front of it go ahead and shoot it and so here's our first pass going up and so it's that sort of stack of dimes that we like to see and then we're coming back and we're going wider and we're now smoothing and shaping in that. And so now we'll go ahead and he'll give it the full 180 and then we'll come back and, uh, and shoot the other side. And so each cage has four of these welds. And so what'll happen is Josh uh, in the back has cleaned all of these up, gotten everything really spotless uh, and degreased. And then you've got about we, we give them 20 minutes in production uh, from the cleaning degreasing uh, side until we can weld. And if, if it goes past that, then we'll have to clean it up again. All right, go ahead and hit it. So this weld is pretty cool when you think about it. It's a 0.3 millimeter wall in the tube and one millimeter in the plate. And so in that first one, you're stirring the materials together at a really deep level, and then it shifts to the plate side, and then it's hitting with a larger beam to melt the plate down to smooth and kind of give you this, uh, this fillet, this blend uh, of where the plate material can now cover and strengthen that weld. It's a really cool process. So you see there, you've got that, that real, that shine, that's what you want in titanium welding. That means you've been really pure in the environment. There's no, uh, and you can see this is right off the machine. We haven't touched this with like a scotch bright or any sort of uh, anything else. So this is kind of indicative of the level that you're able to get straight out of the machine um, without really doing any finishing. And then to make it all look uniform, they'll take it back in the back and they'll just hit everything with the thousand grit equivalent scotch bright. It'll just give it all a uniform color, um, kind of pretty it up, um, then a final inspection, and then it'll go to packaging. So.